You may be one of the millions of men who suffer from the troublesome and often disruptive symptoms related to BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia. This educational video will teach you about BPH and its symptoms, as well as the most common treatment options available to you, including medication, in-office therapy, and surgery. This video is specifically designed to educate you on cooled thermotherapy, also known as CTT, an in-office single treatment procedure which has proven to be a very effective option for men experiencing moderate to severe BPH symptoms. The men you will meet in this video are actual cooled thermotherapy patients. We hope the candid accounts of their experiences before, during, and after their CTT procedure will provide you with valuable insight into the significant benefits of in-office BPH therapy. These patients were not reimbursed for their testimonials. Their statements solely represent their opinions and understanding of their specific medical condition and treatment. The physicians you will meet in this video are very experienced professionals who have treated hundreds of their BPH patients with cooled thermotherapy. They will share their professional opinions on the safety, effectiveness, and long-term results of the procedure and explain what you can expect if you choose cooled thermotherapy. BPH can significantly affect quality of life due to bothersome symptoms such as repeatedly waking at night to urinate, frequent daytime urination, urgency to urinate, and interference with sexual activity. If you suffer from BPH, you know from personal experience how dramatically it alters your everyday life. Waking several times during the night to urinate may already be impacting you and your partner's ability to sleep. During the day, you may be constantly on the lookout for a restroom, making it difficult to perform your job or just relax and enjoy social events. Intimacy with your significant other may be difficult or even impossible. Patients who come to the office typically have a detailed history taken and then a basic physical examination. That examination focuses on the size and the shape of the prostate. We also want to be sure there's no evidence of potential prostate cancer. CTT is ideal for certain size prostates and for prostates that tend to grow more on the sides than on the top or the bottom. To help determine that, we'll sometimes do an ultrasound of the prostate to look at the shape of the prostate in more detail. We'll also do something called a flow test. We'll also look at a urine culture to be sure there's no evidence of infection. The symptoms impacted my life and the fact that by, by sleeping at night, uh, after, after the second or the third time that you got up, you couldn't get back to sleep, so it made the rest of the evening, as far as sleeping is concerned, a little restless. Uh, and you naturally had to be in a, aware of where you were all the time in an endeavor to make sure that there was a facility that you could get to in order to, take, to relieve yourself if you had to. Prior to the treatment, uh, the symptoms were urgent need to go during the day and also frequent need at nighttime while I was asleep, uh, so it made it difficult to get a full night's sleep. The symptoms impacted my life during the day with uh, a need to know where you're going to be, how much fluid to take in, and you just had to be very careful. And it's certainly at nighttime, uh, the not uh, getting a full night's sleep and up and down two or three times or more. Uh, it certainly impacted my life that way. I was getting up in the middle of the night, so I was waking up several times during the night. Uh, also, it would take me a while to even to get my urine flow started. Sometimes I would uh, be doing in the middle, middle of some activity and I'd have to run to the bathroom and go. And then it would, it would take a while too because my, it would take a while to get a urine stream going. The main symptom that I had uh, prior to the uh, procedure was uh, a lack of flow and trouble urinating. Um, also, uh, sexually I couldn't get aroused anymore and it was difficult that way, but the main thing was the fact that I uh, didn't get any flow and I had to lean against the wall to m make myself go to the bathroom. I'd go out like to sporting events and stuff like that and I wind up in the bathroom too many times and wouldn't have to go or I just feel like I have to go. Um, that was the biggest problem that I had doing anything like that. BPH is common to more than half of all men over age 50. It is a non-cancerous condition in which the prostate begins to grow as a normal part of the aging process. The prostate gland, located just below the bladder, is about the size and shape of a walnut. The primary function of the prostate is to produce semen, the fluid that carries sperm. 
The prostate surrounds a portion of the urethra, which is the tube that carries urine from the bladder out of the body. When the prostate becomes enlarged, it compresses the urethra, causing difficulty with urination. When talking about the bladder and its role and the prostate and its role, um, we like to tell patients that uh, the bladder is responsible for storage of urine and emptying of urine. Uh, and as far as the prostate goes, the prostate's function is to uh, more in the emptying process. So when, when men have to urinate, the prostate can either expedite or prevent uh, the bladder from emptying properly. Um, patients can have frequency, urgency, uh, retain more urine, or have incomplete emptying. When men urinate, uh, the urinary stream does go through the prostate, but the prostate also has other functions, especially sexual function, as far as uh, secreting fluid uh, during ejaculation, uh, but also uh, sexual function as far as uh, there's some correlation between uh, erectile dysfunction and also enlargement of the prostate. Enlarged prostate is not life-threatening. However, if left untreated, it may lead to more serious health problems over time, including urinary tract infections, bladder stones, blood in the urine, incontinence, decreased kidney function, or urinary retention. Urinary retention is the sudden and complete inability to urinate and can occur when the obstruction from BPH progresses to the point that the prostate blocks the urethra and it is no longer possible to empty the bladder. If retention occurs, emergency medical intervention is required. In rare cases, permanent bladder and or kidney damage can develop from BPH. Today, the most common treatment options for BPH are medication, surgery, and in-office therapies such as cooled thermotherapy. Drug therapy is often the first line of treatment for BPH and is frequently used to control mild to moderate BPH symptoms. However, clinical studies have shown the medications are only effective in about half of the patients who are currently taking BPH drugs, and some medications can become less effective over time. In addition, medications can have significant side effects such as fatigue, headache, dizziness, erectile dysfunction, and loss of sex drive. Finally, medications can be expensive and those costs will be incurred for the rest of your life. One of the most common ways of treating BPH in the early stages is with medication. Medications that in large part try to reduce some of the muscle tone in a prostate so patients can urinate more easily. And while in the initial phases about half of patients will have some positive result, we all know that taking medication typically comes at a price and that is some side effects. Some of the more common side effects that we see with medications and the reason that patients can't stay on them for too long are feeling very tired, having a stuffy nose, having changes in blood pressure, seeing a change in sexual function, and seeing something called retrograde ejaculation. Oftentimes patients come to our office already on medication for BPH for many years. We, we like to talk to them about the downsides of continuing on uh, medications such as alpha blockers, uh, such as the cost of the medication, potential side effects, complications, interactions with their other uh, current medications, and effect on uh, perhaps their other, co other conditions such as hypertension, uh, renal function, and even sexual function. Over time, another issue with medication is the cost involved. Taking a pill every day, 365 days a year, over many years becomes a very costly proposition. There are now ways of treating prostate enlargement that do not have the side effects of medication and come at far less cost and allow patients to resume normal activities very quickly. It also eliminates the need to remember to take a pill every day. I was taking, I started off taking Cardura and then I went to taking a, a uh, form of, a uh, generic form of, of Cardura and uh, it, it made me lightheaded, uh, especially if I was sitting for a long period of time and I'd get up I would feel lightheaded, and uh, so I had to be careful when I was getting up and getting down, et cetera, that uh, it affected me that way. I was taking Cardora in the beginning and then several other medications for BPH in the process. I guess I've been taking them for four or five years. And in the beginning, they were very, very effective, uh, but after a period of time, uh, they, they seemed to wane, and, as, and I ended up seeking alternative procedures. In the past, surgery was another common treatment for enlarged prostate, but today surgery is usually indicated for more severe symptoms or is recommended if there are complicating factors such as frequent urinary tract infections, kidney damage from urinary retention, blood in the urine, or stones in the bladder. And surgery comes with many risk factors and side effects, including hospitalization, general anesthesia, bleeding, 
post-operative pain and discomfort, incontinence and impotence. Today, there is an alternative to taking medications for the rest of your life that does not have the same risks and side effects common to surgical treatments, cooled thermotherapy. CTT is a safe and effective procedure that has demonstrated strong clinical outcomes with proven durability. The procedure can be completed right in your urologist's office and generally takes between 30 and 60 minutes. Cool thermotherapy requires only oral medication and local anesthesia. No general anesthesia is needed. The doctor will use the cooled thermotherapy device to apply microwave energy to the areas of the prostate that are obstructing urine flow. At the same time, cool water is circulated throughout the treatment areas to protect the urethra and surrounding healthy tissue and to increase patient comfort. When we discuss CTT versus uh, medicines for patients with BPH, we often tell patients, although their medicines have been effective for a period of time, whether months or years, the CTT can make, improve their symptoms even more. Uh, we tell patients that CTT is an office procedure which takes 28 minutes, a catheter is inserted into their bladder and prostate, and the part of the prostate that's enlarged is actually heated with a microwave energy. Uh, there's very little discomfort during the procedure, and once the procedure is over, a catheter is placed for two to three days, and patients can expect recovery about six to eight weeks as far as improvement of their symptoms. What's impressed me most in the 14 years that I've been doing cool thermotherapy is how significant the improvement is in symptoms. Patients who undergo cool thermotherapy report dramatic changes in the number of times they have to get up at night, how often they have to go to the bathroom during the day, urgency, and other bothersome symptoms of BPH. What I like most about cool thermotherapy for my patients is that they do so much better compared to medication, and most studies show that in symptoms improve by more than 50% compared to medication. The actual procedure was not painful. It's, uh, uh, you, they, they numbed everything, and, and uh, you, uh, you felt t little tugs and pulls and things, but the act, there was really no pain at all with the procedure. Uh, there was a little pain with the, the catheter was, was not really painful but uncomfortable. When you started to urinate, it, it hurt a little bit, but that, that just was at the start and then it stopped. But other than that, no, it was not painful. It's hard to give you a pain number because it really, I don't remember pain, uh, just a little warmth. And uh, it, it, I can see no reason for somebody not having a procedure because of worrying about pain or, or things like that. The procedure, as, f as far as comfort was concerned, on a scale of one to 10, uh, one being no pain and number 10 being pain, uh, the whole procedure itself was, was a one. Uh, naturally, when the catheter comes out, there's a little bit of discomfort uh, and a little bit of blood flow after the, but it was short-lived and it was very, very painless. You're usually very nervous when you do any procedure, but uh, I would say that the young lady that talked me through it was, uh, was very good. Uh, she explained everything very well, and uh, um, other than a warm sensation the whole time, it really wasn't that bad at all. Uh, I, I was pretty, I left there feeling pretty much impressed with everything because she was very professional. It didn't hurt that bad. And, um, it's like anything else, I, it, there was some discomfort, but it was very minimal uh, compared to what I thought it might be. When the procedure is finished, you will be given post-treatment instructions. Since you were not given general anesthesia, you will be able to go home shortly after treatment. However, because you may have been given medication to help you relax, you must have someone drive you. Most physicians recommend patients use a urinary catheter immediately following the procedure. A catheter will assist the bladder in draining urine while the swelling subsides. Your physician will discuss his specific catheterization care instructions with you prior to your procedure. Patients typically return to normal activities within 24 to 48 hours, and while results can vary, they usually experience symptom improvement within two to six weeks of the treatment. During the first few weeks after your treatment, it may seem as though there are no changes in your symptoms. However, your body is working on healing itself. The once enlarged prostate is becoming smaller as the tissue destroyed by cooled thermotherapy is reabsorbed into your body, relieving the pressure on your urethra. Within a matter of a few short weeks, you should see most or all of your symptoms diminish or completely disappear. Once recovery is complete, 
you should have significant, long-lasting relief from your BPH symptoms without the need for daily BPH medication. As with all medical treatments, there are some possible side effects with CTT. They may include, but are not limited to, blood in the urine, catheterization, obstruction, clots in urine, bleeding, painful urination, pain or discomfort, bladder trabeculation, rectal irritation, prostatic urethra damage, temporary incontinence, transient erectile dysfunction, and loss of ejaculation. Patients may also experience a minor burning sensation when urinating for one to two weeks following the procedure. Most of these side effects were temporary or mild and required minimal or no medical intervention. For more complete information, or if you have any concerns, speak with your urologist. It is important to note that cooled thermotherapy is covered by Medicare in all 50 states as well as most private insurance companies. My suggestion to anyone who was having the same symptoms that I was, that is, not unable to sleep through the night, getting up several times, unable to get back to sleep, your active life being diminished just a little bit by the fact that you're constantly looking for a place to find a restroom. But I'm three years into it now. Uh, I'm having the same exact effects now that I had a month after the procedure. I sleep through the night and my active life has been given back to me. If you're a candidate for this, I highly recommend this procedure. If somebody's having a problem like uh, I had uh, with the urination, uh, I can't tell you how easy it was compared I've had surgeries before and this wasn't a surgery and it, it was something that was easily done in a short amount of time uh, my healing process and I'm very sensitive to these kind of procedures and my healing process was a few days really um, I would recommend if you're having problems uh, w with urination um, uh, to definitely take a hard look at it. it. It did well for me and I'm very satisfied with uh, the results. This procedure I went through was a real life changer. It, it uh, took away a lot of the problems I was having with an enlarged prostate. I was having discomfort sitting and I was uh, urinating quite often and I had a very poor or oh, very weak urine stream and it, it just life wasn't good. <laughs> You don't have to worry about going to the bathroom in the middle of an activity or, or getting up three or four times during the night to go to the bathroom. It, it just changed so many things and, and uh, it took a lot of worries away and a, and a lot of problems went away. It was really, it's really good. I'd recommend it to anybody. To anybody that has the symptoms of uh, the need to go and, and it's disrupting your life, I would highly recommend the procedure. Uh, for me, it's, it's just uh, made it a lot more comfortable, uh, be able to do more things and not worry about uh, where I am and if there's a restroom nearby, better sleep. Uh, it, it totally outweighs the, the small inconvenience of, of the procedure and the catheter. It, it, it truly, I can, in my, from my heart, say I would recommend the procedure to anybody. Cooled thermotherapy has proven to be safe and effective in treating BPH. If you think you too might be a candidate for cooled thermotherapy, talk it over with your urologist. Together, you can decide if CTT is the best treatment option for you.